Okay, so we're in the chapter on diagonalization, and we're finally getting back to some actual diagonalization. Having taken a detour through inner products, norms, and orthogonality, we did that so that you can now do orthogonal diagonalization. So you've already done diagonalization, now I'm going to do orthogonal diagonalization. Okay. Okay, so a square matrix. A is orthogonally, orthogonally diagonalizable if we can find a diagonal matrix D and or, an orthogonal matrix Q, so that D equals Q inverse AQ, which of course, because Q inverse is the same as Q transpose, because with the matrix is, Q is orthogonal, Q transpose, D equals Q transpose AQ. So remember, we say that a matrix is diagonalizable if you can find a matrix P and a matrix D, so that you have P inverse AP, and then of course D is on the diagonal, it's the eigenvalues, and P has as columns the eigenvectors. And now we do the same. Th we're going to do the same thing, but now we say further that P should be an orthogonal matrix, not just any matrix, but an orthogonal matrix, or not just any invertible matrix, but an orthogonal matrix. And then we call it Q by convention. Okay. Well, in this course, we call it Q. Okay. Now, we have another definition: a square matrix A is symmetric if A transpose equals A. Okay. So, if you look, take a symmetric matrix, okay, so let me write down a matrix, um, let me write down the columns, column, you know, no, normal, normal story like this, like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, so the transpose of that would be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, right? So the rows become the columns. Now, if those two things are to be equal to each other, Sorry, if, if the if the uh, matrix itself is to be equal to the transpose, what do we need? So we're going to need... So we have the first row being ABC, so the first row of this needs to be ABC. Then we have DE, DEF, or here we have on the other side we have... Oh, we have the first column of this. Sorry, we have the first column. This first column is ABC, so this first column here must also be ABC. Okay. Um... See what else can we do? Um, we have F here. Oops, sorry. We've got F here, but then H there. <coughs> so that needs to be an F. As does this. Okay. A, B, C. Okay. Great. Yeah, that's. That's it, if those things are equal. So you can see the matrix is, one, one reason it's called symmetric, it equals its transpose, one reason it's called symmetric is because it's like a mirror image of itself across the diagonal, right? So there's a diagonal, and then you have B, B, C, C, F, F, okay? So this is the best condition to use for a symmetric matrix, but you can remember that what, what it has is this property of reflecting, being reflected across the diagonal like that. Okay. Anyway, now, so they say that if A is orthogonally di diagonalizable, then it's symmetric. Okay, so let's suppose that A is orthogonally diagonalizable. That means we can find a matrix Q that's orthogonal, such that Q transpose AQ equals D, a matrix D we found, which is, okay. So now we're going to multiply on the right by Q transpose, and Q transpose is the inverse of Q, actually, so we get rid of that Q, and on the left by Q, so we get rid of that Q transpose, and on the, on the right-hand side of the equation we have Q, Q, Q transpose. Now we want to look at, we want to prove that A equals A transpose, because that will show that the matrix A is symmetric. So take A transpose, have all this. Now, you should know by now that when you take the transpose of a product of matrices, it's similar to taking the inverse of a product of matrices. You take the transpose of each individual thing, but in reverse. So you have the transpose of Q transpose, then the transpose of D of D, and then the transpose of Q. But the transpose of Q transpose is, of course, just Q. Transpose of transpose is the matrix itself again, so we have A transpose equals Q, D, Q transpose. But that's exactly what A equaled, right? So that means that the A transpose does equal A. So A is symmetric. Okay. Now we have, if A is a real value symmetric matrix, then... So this, this, what, this theorem was about... Being, if A is orthogonally diagonalizable, then it's symmetric. So we could write that as, um, let's write it like, 
aiding of something that like nice will write it like that. And symmetric, we can write it like that. Okay, so that's what that, that theorem, that's what that says, 4.12. But now we have, if A is real, if A is a real value symmetric matrix, so if A is a real value symmetric matrix, then, then it's orthogonally diagonalizable, and its eigenvalues are real, and eigenvectors that belong to different eigenspaces are orthogonal. So the first one, if A is a real value symmetric matrix, then it's orthogonally diagonalizable. That is the opposite. It's the um, the converse, sorry, of of what we already have, right? Though adding the condition that it's A B real valued. So in fact, we can say that orthogonally diagonalizable and symmetric are really the same thing. Well, at least real value symmetric. Okay. But for this one, they're not going to give. Oh, sorry, they're not going to give a proof of it. It's a tricky proof. Okay. I have hand that don't know the proof. Maybe I'll look it up. Maybe we can look it up um, and see. We can understand it. Okay. But now there's some more stuff that's also true about real value symmetric matrix. Not only is it orthogonally diagonalizable, but its eigenvalues are real, and the eigenvectors that belong to different eigenspaces are orthogonal. Okay. So, let's check this. Okay. Uh, number two, let lambda be an eigenvalue of A. We want to show that, to, to show that something is real, you can show that it equals its conjugate, because then, you see, oh, sorry. Uh, where are we now? So here's a, num here's a complex number. To show that it's real, we want to show that the B is equal to zero, right? Now, if it's equal to its conjugate, okay, And of course, you can solve this to find that b equals zero. The only way this is possible is if b equals zero. Okay. So to show that something is real, you can show that one way to do it is to show that the number the number equals its conjugate. Okay. So they okay, say they say we're going to manipulate the equation, the eigenvector equation, ax equals lambda x, in two different ways to show that that the conjugate of lambda equals lambda. First of all, okay, have ax equals lambda x. Okay. Now hit it on both sides with the transpose of the conjugate of x. Okay. Leave that side as it is, but on this side, ah, so what's happening here is, well, you can pull out the lambda, of course, it's just a scalar, and you have this, but that's just the definition of the inner product of x with itself, and the inner product of x with itself is defined as the norm of x, okay? Oh, as the norm of x squared, of course. Okay, so we got this. Uh, secondly, we could take that equation, then we could conjugate both sides, okay? Now when you conjugate both sides, well, A is a real matrix, so it's A is unaffected. X, it might be a complex vector, so we need to leave that on there. Lambda, it might be a complex number, we're going to prove it's not, but it might be a complex number, so we need to leave that on there. X might be a complex vector, so we need to leave that on there. Um, then hit it on both sides with X transpose, this time not X conjugate transpose, X, not X conjugate transpose, but just X transpose. Okay, leave the left the same as it is. But on the right, you get, you get, um, again, pull the, lam pull the lambda, the same lambda conjugate out, and what you have is x transpose, x conjugate, which is what? So you, you now have, you have um, lambda, x transpose, x transpose x conjugate, right? Okay, so what's that? That's that's actually, that would be, what, it would be, it's really the conjugate of um, x transpose conjugate by x, right? So now that x conjugate of x, tra oh no, I mean, the word, sorry, I made a mistake over here. Simplification. So we have x transpose times x conjugate. Now that that is the the inner product of x with itself, okay, which is also known as also known as the norm squared, right? Okay, but here I made a little uh, oversimplification. Okay, so we have here we have x conjugate transpose by x. Okay, that's the same as 
if you take x transpose x conjugate but conjugate the whole thing, right? Okay? So now you have inner product of x with itself, but conjugated, okay? But the inner product of x with itself is just the norm squared, so we're the conjugate of that, but the norm squared is always positive, it's also a positive real number, so the conjugate is, is equal to itself. So this thing does equal that, okay. All right, so we've got these two expressions. Now we subtract these two expressions from each other. So x, x this first one minus this one. So on the left you get this, and on the right you get lambda minus lambda conjugate, and then that thing. Okay, now it says, by the symmetry of A, the left-hand side of this equation is zero. Okay, so they're saying, so the symmetry of A, of course, is that A must equal A transpose. Okay, we've been assuming that about A. So now they say, somehow, they say because of that, the left-hand side of this equation is zero. Um, how is that the case? Oh, I think, let's see, I think it's because, so that left-hand side, um, let's see, I think it's going to come from this fact, from the fact that AX, X must equal X, a transpose X, if X is real. If X is not real, you have a thing there, but X is real, so you don't have that there. I think it must come from that somehow. So, let me think. So, this, this, this second expression, right? The second expression here, this is what? This is the same as, oh, well, a equals a conjugate, okay, because a is real. So this second expression is the same as x transpose, then a, x, the whole thing conjugated, right? So it's the same as the inner product of x with a, x, okay? And now in this one, a transpose equals a, so this expression is the same as x, and then you can have a transpose and x transpose like that. Okay, so that's the same as you do a x transpose by x. Hmm. I'm not, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying how this, by the symmetry of A, the left hand side of the equation is zero. Okay, but we have, let's see, then this we have, it's like the conjugate of all this stuff. Uh, yeah, because you don't need to conjugate that A because it's real, but then you have that. Oh, so you have the conjugate of all of this. So that's like AX x, but the conjugate of all of that, oh, but when you take the conjugate of an inner product, that you reverse it, yes. Okay, so the left-hand side and the right-hand, so this equals this, yes. Okay, maybe there was a simple way of finding that. I feel like there must be if they just said by the symmetry of A, just they haven't like, done that. Uh, there must be a simpler way of doing it. Uh, is there, can I think of a simpler way? You got x transpose a x minus x transpose a x transpose. You can replace that. You can swap one of those. You can swap any a to be a transpose. So I could change that to a transpose. Okay. And now I get I get x transpose ax, but then I could conjugate that and conjugate the whole conjugate that and conjugate the whole thing, yes. Minus x transpose a transpose x. Okay, so this is 
x a x conjugate and this is oh, I have x transpose a transpose that's the same as a x transpose I have x there so this is the same as a x x okay in part of x and x uh, which is the same as now you can swap the order with for that thing that's conjugated x a x conjugate is the same as a x x I mean, that's no simpler really than what we just did. So, if you can think of, a, if you can find a simpler way of doing this, by, of getting find, getting this to zero by the symmetry of a, then please tell me. Okay. Anyway, we have done it. We turned that this left hand side is zero. Um, so we have zero equals this thing. Now, since x is an eigenvector, it's not it's non-zero. Okay, so that's not zero. So that must be zero. So that means that lambda must equal the, the conjugate of lambda, which means that lambda is real. Okay. So we proved this too, that the eigenvalues of a real value symmetric matrix are zero. Now we want to prove that the eigenvectors that belong to different eigenspaces for this matrix are orthogonal. Okay, so let's have x and y being eigenvectors with distinct eigenvalues lambda and mu. So remember, each eigenspace is the set of the subspace of all vectors that have the same eigenvalue. Okay, so now we're taking x and y eigenvectors from different eigenspaces, so they have different eigenvalues. Okay. Now let's look at this. So we do lambda times the inner product of x and y. Okay, basically we're going to want to prove this, this inner product is zero, because that's what orthogonal means, right? We're trying to prove that these eigenvectors are orthogonal, so we're trying to prove that their inner product is zero. So we take lambda times this inner product, and you can now you can bring the lambda inside, because it's, uh, the inner product is this linear in each argument. Well, linear in the first argument, at least. It's kind of conflict linear in the second argument. Okay, then you have lambda x is equal to ax because x is the eigenvalue with eigen, eigenvector with eigenvalue lambda. Okay, now you can do this thing where you swap the positions of these things as long as you conjugate it. But the conjugate a is a real matrix, so the conjugate of it is just a, and the trans a is a symmetric matrix, so the transpose of it is also just a. So conjugate transpose they affect they don't affect a at all. You just have a y. Okay. But a y is the same as mu y because y is the eigenvector of a with eigenvalue mu. Okay, now you can pull the mu out. Now, of course, actually you should put a conjugate over the mu, right? But remember, we just proved in two that the eigen that the eigenvalues are real. So, a conjugate of a, of a real thing is just the thing itself. So that's why there's no conjugate sign over that when you pull it out from the second argument. Okay, now mu is not equal to lambda, right? We've said that these are distinct eigenvalues. So this left-hand side can only be equal to the right-hand side if this bit is zero, i.e. if the inner product is zero, if the eigenvalues are orthogonal. Okay, so what have, we, what have we proved? We've proved that we've proved that effectively you can summarize it by saying what we've proved is that real value symmetric matrices are the same as orthogonally diagonalizable matrices that, and that they always have real eigenvalues and orthogonal eigenvectors. Okay.